In the last part of this learning path, you successfully created a front-end web system that could detect comment spam before it even reached the server. Now, for this, you used a pre-made model that was not trained on your specific data. And as such, if you try hard enough, you will find ways to break it. In this part of the learning path, you will discover how to identify edge cases that the pre-made model could not handle, and then learn how to retrain the model to account for such situations. Let's take a look at the performance of our first approach. Here you can see the predictions of spam from the sentences above. In our first code lab, you set the threshold for spam to be 75% or greater. So for all of these legitimate comments, none are marked as spam. So far, so good. However, after getting a few users to try the system, you will likely find legitimate comments that are marked as spam as shown. These are also known as false positives. As you can see, all of these comments have a score over 75%, leading them to be marked as spam, even though they are genuine questions. One trivial thing we can do at this point is to increase the confidence threshold of the spam classification to be over 98.5%. That way, all of the sentences shown would be classified as non-spam, and the ones from before would also be classified correctly too. But let's check some more examples. Here we have some true positives. These are spam comments that were correctly identified as spam. If you had not changed the threshold in the prior section, these would have been classified as intended. However, because you changed threshold to 98.5%, you can see that two of these are now treated as non-spam, which is incorrect. You could try to lower this to 96%, but if you did that, then one comment from the previous section would be misclassified. However, Maybe that's acceptable, so let's continue. Finally, you can check the false negatives. These are spam comments that were allowed to be posted. Looking at the classification percentages here, there is nothing you can do by simply changing the spam threshold without making many of the prior situations be misclassified too, given that the lowest confidence is around 7% here. The only thing left to do at this point is to retrain the model to account for the new edge cases you discovered so it gets better at predicting such situations. Now, while this learning path revolves around web technologies, the pre-made model used before was actually generated using TensorFlow's model maker, which was written in Python. Whilst it's entirely possible to use and retrain models written for TensorFlow.js natively, that is via Node.js or in the browser of JavaScript, in the next code lab, you will learn how to retrain and export a model created with model maker so that it can be executed in the web browser with TensorFlow.js. It should also be noted that TensorFlow.js has a script to help you convert Python saved models too. And this is a really good skill to learn as often machine learning models may be made in a different language to the one that you're planning to use the resulting model in. Now there's no need to worry if you've never used Python before as you'll be simply executing everything via the web browser using a Colab notebook and it's as simple as copying and running a few pieces of code in a web interface. So that's, let's get started and retrain this model.